Well, good afternoon, hello, and a warm welcome to everybody joining us for today's bar chart webinar. My name is Jean Baker, and I'm going to be your moderator for today's session. And today we are here to talk a little bit about ETFs, exchange traded funds. And we're gonna be talking about important things to look for when you go to choose an ETF to add to your portfolio. And our webinar today is gonna to be run by Bar Chart's John Rowland. Uh, John's a financial markets educational consultant, and he's got a number of years behind him in the markets. And if you've joined one of our other recent webinars, you know that his background is primarily in futures energies markets, uh, but he has a lot of insight to give us today regarding uh, the ETFs in the ETFs markets. So he'll be joining us in just a minute. Before he joins us, let me just talk a little bit about the disclaimer that's up on your screen today. This is really an educational webinar, strictly for educational purposes, and it's not a recommendation to buy, sell, hold, or trade securities or any other investments. Your decision whether or not to make a purchase should be based on your own due diligence and not on any representation that we're going to make to you. And one other housekeeping note, this webinar is being recorded and you will get an email later on today with a link to the recording. And all of our archived webinar recordings can be found in the tools menu on the Bar Chart site. There's a webinars page that you'll find there and uh, it'll be up a little bit later on today, a little later on this afternoon, you'll see the link to the, today's recording there. So with that, I'm going to turn off uh, turn off my talking, turn everything over to John. John, are you out there? I am, Gene. Thank you for having me back. I'm uh, looking forward to today's uh, session. Well, we're looking forward to it too. So thanks, and controls are over to you. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. So yeah, to, as Gene had mentioned to us, uh, we're going to be talking about exchange traded funds or ETFs, and um, outside of the futures world, which is where you know I've got a lot of my experiences, I really like ETFs because of a lot of different reasons. Um, a lot of benefits um, that we get from using ETFs. Uh, benefits compared to stocks and benefits compared to um, uh, mutual funds. Um, so the first one that is really, I think, one of the best benefits for us is trading flexibility. What's cool about uh, exchange traded funds or ETFs is that they trade just like a stock. In other words, um, they have an opening trading session, just like when the stock market opens, and they have a closing trading session. Uh, and throughout the day, uh, these um, funds are actively trading, and then there's active uh, bids and asks. So it's we can enter the market at our own choosing. We can enter the market. Uh, we can have limit orders um, to come into the market. We don't have to wait for the end of the day when the settlement of a mutual fund, if I want to buy a mutual fund, you know, I'm going to get the price of the mutual fund at the end of the day. But because I have this trading flexibility, this allows me a lot greater risk management certainly to get in the market and to get out of the market. But also, you know, if we think about uh, trading flexibility and risk management, um, you know, all those skills that have, we've learned uh, from looking at, let's say, stock charts, you know, technical analysis and fundamental analysis that we've learned from trading in the stock market, we still have those same benefits uh, trading ETFs because they trade like a stock. Um, the next benefit of ETFs is uh, portfolio diversification. And um, what we're really saying here is a ETF will allow us to diversify through uh, a wider selection of stocks. Now, many times we might have a trading idea or we might like a stock or a particular uh, market sector. And, you know, we might go into that sector and say, hey, you know, for instance, um, you know, like online uh, retail sales, you know, this 
COVID world that we live in, you know, I would say, hey, I'm, I think that there could be some trading opportunities to uh, pick an online retailer. So which one do I pick? I don't know which one to pick. And I might pick, you know, a one that will benefit from uh, the COVID situation. But then again, I might pick one that might not, or maybe has already uh is a crowded trade. For instance, Amazon, right? Amazon is definitely one of those mar uh, stocks that is going to benefit from online uh, retail sales. But, you know, this might be a crowded trade. So what ETFs allow us to do is diversify our portfolio, it allows us to look at a basket of stocks and give me a wider range of uh, exposure. Um, and also this diversification is as I learn about different ETFs, I can widen my view of markets, a broader uh, selection of stocks, you know, uh, uh, for instance, the Dow or the NASDAQ, or I can be very specific. I can narrow my focus. I could pick a, a very unique sector or uh, gr industry group. Uh, and inside of that, I can get even a greater diversification. Um, lower costs, right? And this is a good benefit as well. Uh, compared to a mutual fund, uh, ETFs have uh, a lot lower costs. Um, the real main reason why these uh, ETFs have lower costs is because how they deal with uh, the folks that are trading them. They don't have to do the same rules that a mutual fund is. A mutual fund, you know, have all these individuals or companies uh, that are invested in it they have to give them you know monthly statements but if we purchase um an etf that responsibility falls onto our broker right and so the etf is relief of all that extra cost so there's a lot of lower costs uh tax benefits um you know depending on um what type of account that i'm going to be trading my etfs in a taxable account or a tax deferred account, for instance, um, an IRA, um, I can re receive some tax benefits. Many times um, uh, our mutual funds will push um, uh, capital gains uh, through to their um, participants uh, where we might have that opportunity to defer those taxes um, and dividends as well. Uh, when we get a dividend, um, from either a stock or a mutual fund, you know, we might have to report that uh, depending on the different uh, accounts I have. But ETFs, will the dividend could be inside of that ETF. And if I'm in a non-reportable account, I can use that as a benefit. Uh, the other thing we can do is we can do dividend reinvestment, just like we would do uh, in uh, a stock as well. Uh, and the final benefit of ETFs is personal time benefits. And what I'm really saying here is that um, wherever we are in our life cycle, we all look at time a little bit different, but we all value time. And what is nice about an ETF is with just a little bit of effort, and certainly with the tools that are afforded to me uh, in bar um, chart, I can make a lot of assessments in a very short period of time. My life cycle, you know, I'm a little bit older and, you know, my wife and I like to travel and I have two older daughters, you know, I'm going to be a grandfather pretty soon. So, you know, I want to be able to travel, but some of us who have uh, regular jobs or, you know, um, family life that we need to take care of, you know, we don't need have a lot of time to look and research um, different uh, stocks or different markets. You know, my time is is limited. Or maybe I'm decided that I do have. Um, I set a certain period of time. I value my time. I value my time to look for uh, good uh, trading assets. But you know, I spend an hour or two hours looking for all these different stocks, and I don't find anything that I like, or I don't find anything that fits my category. That is wasted time. And so ETS will allow us to accelerate that time and make that time more valuable to us. So what are the, some of the comparative analysis that's gonna help us select um, 
are ETFs. So the first one I'm going to look at is what we call the funds focus. What is it tracking or what is it trying to achieve um, in the purpose of that uh, ETF? And when we look at fund focus, we can start at the big picture, the broader market, right? Uh, uh, the, the, the Dow, the NASDAQ, the S&P. Or we can start filtering down. We can start looking at a very specific sector, right? Um, agriculture, commodities, uh, financials, uh, right? And then we can even drill down greater. We can look at particular industries or industry groups and and I can even drill down even farther I can go into a very specific industry right um, and this is how we can benefit uh, from trading ETFs there is a wide range of different ETFs and different focuses um, Another criteria I'm going to look at is something called constituents and what we're talking about here is what stocks or what elements are inside of my ETF? And one of the things we're going to look at is the top 10 holdings. What we'll look at is what is the majority of our ETF focus on or what stocks are they in components of our ETF? And I'm going to look at the top 10. And I'm going to say to myself, these top 10 um, holdings how much do they represent the total ETF um, what we want to try to achieve is a ETF that is a little bit balanced right where we see that the uh, ETF is spread out among more stocks right a greater diversification but not necessarily we could also look for an ETF that is heavily weighted or is more focused on maybe a handful of stocks if that is our plan. So we'll look at 10 top 10 holdings as a percentage of the whole ETF. Management fees, right? Um, how much is my ETF charging me to hold it? Now, the sometimes it's referred to as the expense ratios. They're both the same thing. And if I was going to give you a general rule as far as management fees or expense ratios, um, you know, the kind of the industry average is, you know, less than 1%. And most of our ETFs are going to fall in that, you know, maybe a 0.4 of a percent, just a little bit less than half a percent to about, you know, six tenths or seven tenths of um, a percent. What I want to be aware of is an ETF who is charging me maybe more than 1%. Um, there better be a reason why that ETF is charging me that greater than 1%, it better be performing well. If it isn't, then, you know, I'm losing uh, a little bit more money uh, as this fund manager is charging more. Now, on mutual funds, you know, some mutual funds, the management fees is as high as, you know, 5%. So, uh, you know, you can see a greater tax advantage. Um, Assets under management, or sometimes referred to as um, AUM, or sometimes it'll be called managed assets. And so in this one here, what we're going to do is we're going to look for a threshold of asset under management to give us a kind of an indication of acceptance, right? Um, as ETFs become popular, as as the market accepts an ETF, more money will come into that ETF. So we're going to look at a threshold value. And again, you know, depending on what I want to try to achieve, you know, that threshold could be different from individual. But we look at that and we would say maybe a hundred million dollars would be kind of that threshold. That would be telling me that the market is accepting it and that the, that ETF is doing well or is a healthy ETF and that monies is flowing into it. And that asset under management 100 million is also kind of telling me that that is more active, right? There's more participants in it. And so that could create greater liquidity and liquidity, liquidity could uh, uh, play out in terms of volume. And so when, when I look at you know, that pricing flexibility, an ETF that has 100 million volume, uh, under assets, 
will probably have greater volume on a day-to-day -day basis and allow me that ability to come in and out of that ETF uh, throughout the day. Dividends. Um, here, dividends. Well, you know, depending on the ETF, the purpose of the ETF, you know, dividends can fluctuate. If I'm in um, a growth stock uh, ETF, then dividends aren't as important to me, right? Um, but if dividends are important to me, then, you know, I'm going to use this just as a comparative, right? Not necessarily I'm going to say I'm not going to take this ETF because it didn't give me this greater dividend, but I'm going to just use it as a comparative. And, you know, in this low interest rate environment that we're currently in, you know, I think a general rule, again, a general threshold that we can start thinking about is, you know, about 2% to about uh, 3%. But, you know, we will look at a lot of ETFs today and we'll see that, you know, that maybe their uh, their annualized yield is only about one and a half, 1.75. That doesn't mean that ETF is not a good ETF. It just means that it's dividend yield. Now, what I really like about seeing a dividend in an ETF is, again, it's telling me the health of that ETF. Think about this. An ETF will invest in stocks. If those stocks are doing well, a well-run company will issue dividends. So an ETF that is distributing dividends is telling you that it's a healthy ETF, that it has good stocks in it. So just having dividends is actually a good sign for our ETFs if dividends is something that I want. And some other notables that we can think about are PE ratios and relative strengths. These are more technical um, uh, comparative analysis. Now, this, these ones might be important to those of us who are a little bit more sophisticated, but um, these ones, I think I'm going to let my fund manager uh, do the job. The fee that I'm paying, I'll let them figure out these PE ratios, these relative strengths. Let them make those decisions. Because if you think about classic PE ratio analysis, you know, and I'm only going to invest in stocks or ETFs that have a low or a reasonable PE, uh, PE ratio, you know, I would have missed out on some of the greater um, uh growth stories in the last decade. You know, certainly our Amazons, Googles, and even Tesla, right? So I'm going to leave that to the fund manager. Leverage. Leverage is how the ETF functions. And so when we look at leverage, some ETFs will have greater leverage, a greater exposure to a particular index. Uh, we'll see one-time leverage, two-time leverage, three-time leverage. It could be a positive leverage, but there are also ETFs out there that will have leverage to the negative. In other words, they do better, the price of the ETF goes up when they have the market goes down and negative leverage. And so that is a unique type of ETF, right? Um, and options. So uh, options is a tool that I'm going to use in my trading for a more educated and experienced, but those of us who haven't learned about options, you know, I would uh, encourage you to learn about options because many of the ETFs that I'm going to look at, if they have that option element, then it also increases um, uh, my risk management skills. All right. All right. So here we are in the ETF section of bar chart and I'm under the ETF market overview and this is kind of just giving us a big picture of uh, ETFs and here we see our S&P, our NASDAQ, our, our gold, our GLD, right? A, a lot of the more popular ones uh, in terms of uh, size and uh, liquidity volume. Um, and if I come into one of these for instance, the Qs, the QQQ, and I click on that, this will take me to uh, the quotes page and under the price overview here, now I can start to look at that individual ETF. I can look at those things that I want to uh, do those comparative analysis, right? I get a little bit of update of what is it doing today? What if it's range in price? 
right? How much has it changed over the last five days? A little chart here. And here's bar chart is going to give us a, an opinion. Um, in this case, a strong buy. And this opinion is based on uh, many different uh, inputs. I think it's about 13 or so. But down here, uh, we can see how many assets under management, right? Um, our earnings ratio, our dividend, right? And our dividend yield. And when is the most recent dividend? This will be important for somebody who's trading options against it. And our management fee, right? I can look at the performance of this ETF. And again, here I'm breaking down performance by one day, five days, a month, three months, six months, right? And um, get a better sense of what this ETF has been doing over that longer period or shorter period of time. Another one I might go to is the profile. And the profile here, again, will give you that data that breaks down the different ETFs, the things that are important to me. Again, um, assets under management, our PE ratios, our management fees over here, our dividends as well. But also, it's going to tell me a little bit of a description of uh, what this ETF's purpose is or what it's trying to achieve, right? And in this case, the, uh, the QQQs is going to track the index, the NASDAQ 100, and it's going to rebalance it quarterly and, and reconstruct it annually, right? Now, the next thing I'm going to look at is my constituents, right? What makes up my ETF? And we can see here for the Qs, the QQQ, right? It's telling me that it has a number of holdings, 104 stocks. Now, you know, the NASDAQ is 100 stocks, but it's always rotating in stocks and then rotating out. So there will always be just a little bit over 100, not many, in this case, 104. And we can see here for the Qs, our top 10 represents 50%, 55% of the total ETF. You know, so this is telling us that the top 10 is, you know, a greater than half of the whole ETF. But here, if I go into the constituents, right, it's going to break it down by all of those 104 individual stocks. And we can see that in the top four or five, you know, we do see Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, and our Google. So our top five here we can see represents almost over 40%. So this is a heavier weighted ETF, top five, 40%, right? Some of the ETFs we'll look at, we might see our top three or five will represent 60 or 70%. Now that's not a bad thing or a good thing. It just lets me know uh, that this one is maybe a little bit more heavily uh, weighted. So let's go back to our market overview. So let's say that um, I want to invest in the NASDAQ, but maybe I don't feel comfortable having a very heavily weighted um, uh, NASDAQ related ETF. So I could come down here and I can filter out these popular this market overview by the equities or uh, bonds, uh, different indexes. And here I'm going to make the change to the NASDAQ 100. And what we'll see is that there are about seven or eight uh, ETFs that are designed to track the NASDAQ 100. And I could look at each one of these comparatively, right? Here's one that's more focused on the tech sector, technology, right? Um, here's one that an ETF is based on cover calls and option strategy. Here's our Qs, right? And here's one that says QQEW, QQ NASDAQ equal weight. And again, here we see that the summary of the fund says this is an equal weighted fund, right? And if I look at my constituents on this one, 
Again, I have about 100, 105 different stocks, but now you see that our top 10 only is about 11.5% of the total ETF. And we can see that our holdings as a percentage of the different companies that we have inside of our ETF is equally spread. So this is more of an equal weighted. And this might be a benefit that I might be looking for, a more equal, equally weighted ETF. So let's go back to our NASDAQ for a second. Actually, um, let's do this. Let me go to my tools. And I have a watch list that I created for you guys. And inside this watch list here is I put the cash, the NASDAQ 100. Here's my QQQs, right? Here is um, the futures market, which is a reflective of the NASDAQ. And then here's our greater weighted elements that we found in the NASDAQ. And here's our equal weight. I like to look at pictures. And here we see our NASDAQ has been in a nice uptrend. And we did see that price has recently broke out above a recent pivot high and it gapped higher. That is the index itself. Here's our ETF. Again, same, it's tracking the same thing, right? If we look at the futures market, futures markets don't gap, but the same thing. It's broken out and it's gone higher, right? Microsoft. Again, a large component of my ETF and my NASDAQ, right? It's broken out, it's gapped up higher, right? So they're, they are tracking each other, right? Apple, the same thing, right? But if I look at my QQQ, my equal weight, right? It, it's still trending the same direction, but it doesn't have that a big explosive movement, right? That big uh, gap up. It is still moving up, but it's more equal weighted, right? So if I go back to my cues, I'm going to show you kind of a cool little tool that we have. I'm going to go to my interactive charts. Give me a second here to pop this up. And here's my chart, my interactive chart for the cues. I'm going to go up here where it says compare, right? And I'm going to type in my QQ equal weight. I'm going to change this to a percent scale, and I'm going to apply it. And you can see, yeah, the more heavily weighted uh, ETF is performing uh, a little bit better, right? But if we just change our chart just a little bit, and I'm going to slide this over to where the market had most recently made uh, that low, let's call that the COVID crash low, and we look at the difference between our equal weight and our heavier weighted QQQs, notice that the difference, you know, in terms of percentage gain is only about 5%, right? So, you know, that heavier weighting, you know, it, it, it will make a difference, but it's not that great of a difference if we really look at that picture. And actually, you can see that at one point, the equal weight was actually outperforming uh, the Qs. All right, so let's pretend um, I don't have an idea or, um, excuse me, let's go into our screeners first. Let's say I don't have an idea uh, what I want to trade, right? And so I can go into uh, my ETF screeners. Now, about three weeks ago, uh, so we did a, a webinar talking about screeners for stocks. And one of the things I was advocating is that we put in um, a sector screening into our stocks. And a lot of folks who were in that uh, webinar were saying, hey, why would I put a sector screening when I'm doing a stock uh, screener? Um, and I said, well, leave the default on checked and what will happen is when you start screening stocks you're going to start recognizing certain sectors are going to start clustering inside of those stocks and then that would give us a lead for an opportunity so under the etf screener there's a lot of ways we can screen it but we do have sectors and in our sectors we do have commodities financials geographic 
uh, and also industry. So I created a screener for you guys today, which is based on sectors. And what I've done is I've looked at the industrial sector. Now, why did I look in the industrial sector? Because when I've been doing my stock screening, I've noticed a lot of industrial type stocks have been ones that have been outperforming the market. Now, inside of the industrial sector, we do have a more specific agriculture, biotech, consumers, financials. And one of the ones that I've noticed that I've seen a lot of stocks that have been performing well are these material stocks. And I'm going to put just one of those qualifiers, in this case, assets under management. And I've looked into that, and now I've gotten 17 different uh, ETFs for me to choose from. Uh, materials, fidelity materials. Here's a gold miners, right? Basic materials, junior uh, mines. Um, Silver, right? Silver has been in our headlines recently. Another material, right? So I can go into here now and do that comparative analysis again. This filter page, if I start at the main view, this is kind of going to give me a snapshot of what is going on today. The last, the change, percentage change, high, low, and the volume and the time that the last updated uh, price came. Technical. Right, I can look at what is the bar chart opinion based on these 13 different studies. What is my relative strength? Uh, what is the market volatility of this historical market volatility? Something that my options traders are interested. Average volume, right, over 20 days. And this one, what we would do is, you know, we might look at see if we see an increase in volume based on what we've seen over the last 20 days. An increase in volume would be a signal to us that either money is coming into an ETF if prices is rising, or maybe money is coming out of an ETF as prices are falling. And then again, our 52 week high and low. The performance of the ETF, what is it done um, over um, the last one year period what is it the percent change what is it's changed over one month or three months and how much has it changed over 52 weeks so this one is well i kind of like this one because what i'm going to do is i'm going to look and see how much my etf has performed on a 52 week versus my three month and what i want to try to do is i want to find a etf whose performance in the last three months is close to or is a higher percentage of my 52 week uh, percent change. Now the theory in this one is that um, there is statistical proof that a market or sector or industry or stocks that lead for six months will also lead the market for another six months. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to find that ETF that is starting to lead, right, in that first three months, and that that first three months is making up a majority of the profits or potential uh, movements uh, in the 52 week. What I don't want to do is see my 52 week, let's say 100% or 50% increase and that the last month, the last three months, it was only 5% or 10%. That would tell me that that, that ETF has already um, gone up. Now, the one that I see right here, I'm kind of scanning this quickly, is my basic materials. You can see our 52 week percent change is only up 8%, but in the last three months, it's up 23%. So here we see that the last three months, this uh, ETF has been performing very well, and that the probability is that moving forward for the next three to six months, it's probably going to continue to outperform the market. And then my fundamentals, right? Those things that we said that we want to look at, our leverage, our AUM, our management fees, and our dividends and dividend yields. But I'm a visual learner, right? I like to look at uh, pictures, right? I, I really kind of like to look at pictures. And so I can do that visual uh, discussion, right? I can look at the different ETFs in terms of how they uh, are performing. And I really believe that price it tells us a very powerful story. The markets uh, will 
you know, will tell us what it's doing by price, right? And here's some of our um, miners, right? Right, you can see that they are, my, here's our nugget miners, right? Um, but where was that one that I liked? Okay, here was the base one. Yeah, base material. And, um, you know, this one has been performing pretty well, a nice uptrend, right? Nice uh, particular uptrend. And, you know, when I think about trends, you know, I like trends in terms of defining trends as cycles of impulses and corrections, impulses and, and corrections, impulses and corrections. And an uptrend for me is a cycle of impulses and corrections where I'm making higher highs and higher lows, higher highs and higher lows. But the other thing I can look at is, here's up here, I can create some templates. And one of the templates that I'm very fond of for equities in including ETFs, is um, this 20-day moving average versus the 100-day moving average. And what I really want to start looking for is, you know, an identification of a trend, in the case here, the 20-day, and then when the 20 crosses over the 100-day, that is a buy signal for me, right? I love this buy signal. And you can see that since this buy signal on this particular uh, ETF, that our price has gone up for about almost, what was that, about 13 points. In this case, on an $84 stock, or excuse me, ETF, uh, $13 would be, you know, about, oh, you know, 15, 16, 18% return on our money since, you know, about June. So this is one of the things I like to look at those pictures of uh, price, okay? All right, let's say um, I don't have a particular idea and I want to generate some ideas, okay? So I can go to popular ETFs. And again, popular could be assets under management or liquidity or, you know, just actively trading. And so here we have global, we have industries, we have specialized industries, fixed income, right? Uh, commodity producers, commodities, currencies, right? Um, and, you know, I might tell myself a story or I might be thinking about a particular story. And certainly the COVID, you know, is creating some trading opportunities. And one of the stories I've been thinking about is, you know, um, industries are dealing with a lot of issues with, you know, how their employees are being fragmented. You know, we're all working from home and we're out in a, uh, in a confined area. And one of those risks that they have is security, right? How are they going to deal with uh, security issues, uh, internet security? And so here under the specialized industries, right? specialized industries, I do see one, I, I love this name, don't you love that? Hack, right? A cybersecurity um, uh, ETF. And this kind of resonates with that whole uh, COVID story, right? Here's an ETF that is going to probably do well based on the fact that some industries are going to have to, companies are going to have to deal with this new uh, security risk that they have in their uh, uh, doing their business. Right. So, again, I can look inside a hack. Right. I can get a quick snapshot of what's going on. I can see what a bar chart is telling me. Right. But again, you know, I might look at my profile. Assets under management. Right. What are my management fees? Right. Does it have options? Right. Is it paying a dividend? Right. And what are my constituents? Right. What are my holdings, right? And we can see that ETF, this ETF has uh, 59 different stocks on it. And my top 10 only represent 30% of my ETF. And that is telling me that this is a more balanced ETF, right? And my, only, my top 10 is only a third of my whole ETF. And when I look at the stocks are in here and the holdings, I can see that this is an equally weighted uh, ETF. I like this this ETF because of this balance, this greater diversification. But I can also look at the individual stocks here. And I, you know, I look at some of these names and I, some of these names are definitely on the forefront, Cisco, Palo Alto, Juniper. Uh, so, you know, these are companies that I'm aware of that are in the, you know, the security world, right? So 
I can look at those uh, individual stocks if I want, make sure that they fit the criteria of what I want from this particular ETF. All right. So that's popular, right? That's where we have a kind of an idea, or maybe we want to just sort of do that large filter down and 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 drill down. But let's say I don't have any idea. I don't know which ETF that I want to trade, right? Um, so here, bar chart gives us the top 100 ETFs, and we could go into the help, and they'll tell you how they describe the top uh, 100 ETFs, and what is the purpose of them? And we have, you know, a lot of uh, ETFs to choose from. And again, what I would do here is, you know, I might just look at the top 20 to start off. And notice they do rank them for us. And I'll just kind of get an idea what are the top 20 ETFs that are actively trading. And I do see a lot of miners. And this is probably because of gold and silver currently, right? Uh, I do see online retailing, uh, innovations, right? Um, so there's a lot of interesting ones here. Here's solar, right? That's definitely a story that we could be telling myself right now. But what I could do is, on this one, is I can come up here where it says screen, right? And now I can screen these 100 ETFs. Right? It'll, it'll bring this in here and then I can bring in some different elements to screen it. So what I did was before uh, we started today, I did a screener uh, based on the top 10 hundred, ET, excuse me, the top 100 ETFs. And I just put in those qualifiers that we talked about, uh, managed assets, dividends, management fees, and options. And now I'm going to boil down uh, those 100 ETFs. And now what I've discovered is it's only given me three to really look at. These ones are going to fill those requirements that I want. Here's one that's a multi-sector ETF. Here's one that's about that web, right, the web. And here's one that's on semiconductors. Again, I could go into my flip charts, look at those pictures of those different ETFs, see if I see that story that I like, right, that picture of that trend, right, nice, very nice uh, uh, trending market. Very, you're not getting too crazy, not getting extended, and boy, look at that, nice little price actions. What I like on these kind of stocks, I mean, this is what I wanted to see. I want to see a nice upsloping trend, my 20-day moving average, and when price you know, here's our impulse correction, impulse correction, impulse correction. You know, when price re-engages my 20-day moving average, that is actually an indication for me to have an opportunity to add to my position or to buy into this particular ETF. I am being patient. I'm waiting for price to impulse and then correct. But look at how well this ETF has done since the crossover of the 20-day versus the 100-day. All right. Okay, so that's one way to start looking for ETFs that I have no uh, idea that I want, what ETFs that I want to trade. Um, another one that I like is today's surprises. And I've only clicked on the bullish surprises. And for today's surprises, you know, I'm looking at, you know, again, the top 20, and I can do it by standard deviation. I could change it by um, a percentage change, right, or a value change, right? And today, this is kind of an interesting, this is, uh, uh, you know, this is a little bit outside the box here, but I'm looking at the top uh, surprises today, and I see a lot of, ETFs that are interest rate sensitive, bonds, bonds, uh, bonds, uh, another one, bonds, bonds, uh, yields, right? Municipal funds, right? Um, so this could be telling us a unique story, right? First of all, you know, the, one of the things it could be telling us is that this is just the natural cycle of investment and that 
uh, fund managers are noticing that you know fixed assets maybe are cheap compared to maybe the stock market which might be getting a little frothy and it's just a natural rotation of balancing of portfolios but it also could be giving us an indication that you know maybe the market is feeling that yeah stock prices are a little bit um overvaluated and that uh, you know, when we think about the stock market, the stock market hates uncertainty. And if we look at what's going to happen over the next six months, there's a lot of uncertainty on the horizon. Certainly with COVID, you know, are we in a second wave, right? Um, you know, could that damage the economy moving forward? Um, and, you know, we have our national election, too. And that is a huge uh, question mark that is hanging over the uh, the head of the market. So this could be a signal to us uh, that, um, you know, maybe the the stock market is going to pause and that these other assets will be uh, uh, more um, desirable, right? But what I did was um, yesterday I looked at um, – my surprises as I was setting up for today and I went into created a watch list and where's my watch list here we go and here's my surprises from yesterday and I'm looking at these ETFs and let's look 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 which ones surprised yesterday and I see rare earth, right? This is a story that I like, right? You know, um, you know, lithium batteries, Tesla. I mean, it all kind of you know weaves together. Online retail, right? This you know this COVID story, clean energy, right? Wind, solar, right? I mean, this is certainly you know uh, you know the new normal, right? A uh, retail sales. Uh, precious metals, right? Gold, silver, right? Um, solar. There's another solar one, right? And consumer discretionaries. If I had no idea what ETFs I wanted to trade, or I didn't have any fresh ideas, all I did here was I went to my surprises, and these uh, ETFs uh, popped up, right? And if I look at this in terms of diversification, if I just invested in each one of these, why that would be a really nice diverse portfolio, wouldn't it? So there's a lot of tools that we can use in um, side of bar chart that is going to help us find um, the different individual markets. So let's kind of put this together. Why do we like ETFs? Trading flexibility. They trade just like stocks. The skills I learn about trading stocks, I can apply to them. I like them because it's going to help me uh, manage my risk better. ETFs are going to give me a greater uh, portfolio diversification, either at the broader markets or very specific. And inside of each one of those ETFs are going to give me some greater uh, diversification, uh, lower costs, right? Tax benefits. And because of bar chart, my partner who is going to help me find these different uh, ETFs to trade in, you know, they're doing the analysis of a hundred technicians, right? And they're giving it to me in a very short period of time. What are the, some of the things that we're going to look for? our constituents, our focus, our management fees, our assets under management, dividends and dividend yields if those are important to us. And don't forget to keep an eye on leverage, right? A multiple leverage market might have a greater price movement, but it also could have greater risk and options for those of us who are more in tuned uh, or more seasoned trading, you know, learning how to trade options will give you some greater risk management. So that is kind of our webinar for today. 
Any questions out there, Jean? Yeah, John, uh, we have a few questions that came in. Uh, let's see, Aaron is asking if you could share some additional thoughts about how leverage acts as a factor. Um, okay, so. Like under, under or outperforming ETFs. Um, how does leverage act as a factor at all? Well, the greater the leverage, the more sensitive that ETF is going to be to whatever it's tracking. So if I have a two-time leverage, it's going, to, it's going to act twice as much or it's having twice as much price movement than we would see a, on a one-time leverage or three times as much. So let me give you a good example of that. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, let's do this. Let's try this one. Um, actually, don't want to be here. Um, give me a second here, Aaron. What is, what is another? I do have a good example. I just got to find it. Um, well, let me go to my sect. That's what I want. I want to go to my sectors. Uh, let me hang on here. On my ETF, my tools, my screener. Right in the in the ETF screener, there is a leverage uh, filter. I'm not sure if that's what you're looking for as no, well. No, what I'm I was going to show is remember we were talking about industries, and. So here we see, um, was it Aaron was it you said was? Here we can see yes. the junior mine uh, has a three time leverage, right? Three time leverage, right? Um, and, you know, we look at the performance of this one, right? Right? Right. I mean, look at, you know, a 52 week low, it's been down 700%, but in the last month, you know, it's up. 60%. It's really accelerated uh, in uh, performance. Let's go back to the main page here. Um, under our results, um, let's look at this, the nugget one, right? Right. Right. Um, in terms of performance, right? Right, uh, maybe we get a greater performance. And this is not a good example. Let's see, silver. Let's check that one out. Right, a lot more accelerated price movement. So the greater the leverage, more price acceleration uh, we could get. Let's see. Look at. Let's look under our performance. Right, right. And we can see that junior mine was down, you know, 80% over 52 week in the last three months. Right, it has a greater leverage. It's up almost 100%, right? Almost 118%. So the greater the the time leverage, the more uh, price movement will. But it also adds more risk to us because when the market retreats, uh, these greater leverage, uh, positive leverage ones will retreat as much, uh, much faster than what we would see in a one-time leverage. Okay. Okay. So I know we don't have really time to go into options. You mentioned that as part of your uh, your slide presentation, but we have someone asking how would I screen for covered calls on ETFs? And John, you can just follow along. If you go to the options tab, we have a covered calls screener. If you can open covered calls. Covered Calls Screener, one of the filters, so if you open up the Set Filters tab, after the results show here, you will see it's, there's, it's the third filter down already selected. It's security type. This is pre-selected for stocks. If you check ETFs, you'll be able to screen for covered call options on your ETFs that you already own. So that's 
that's just one quick answer to a question. John, sorry, I took no, that one no, over that's for fine. you. Right. No, that's fine. But, um, you know, for those of us who are trading ETFs, you know, one of the ones that I was kind of looking at um, just recently, and that was that, remember we were talking about um, um, that materials, right, our materials, basic materials. Um, Well, actually, now that you're on this basic material ETF, you'll see in the left navigation menu, we have covered calls under the options section. So right, somebody could go directly there. Yeah. Is that where you're going? Yeah, that was kind of what mm -hmm. I was going for. But um, what I was going to show your option trader here is, you know, if I look at this ETF, you know, you know, I see that this is trending nicely. Not only that, but we just had a recent gap up. And if I look at more of the historical, you know, right here, we can see more of an historical is that we are breaking out of, you know, a, a most recent uh, pivot high. Or if we go back, you know, from, you know, February of this year. So my options traders, you know, this would be um, maybe not a covered call strategy here, uh, but maybe also look at a, a bull call spread here because, you know, if we could break above here, where's our next area resistance, you know, you know, from 100 to 105, that might be enough to, you know, get a nice premium. And then above here, you know, we can go back over three years, you know, you know, from above 100, we could get, you know, another 10%, you know, 110. So that would be uh, one of the ones, one of the ones I was kind of looking at, which, you know, I would really be interested in about options was that rare earth one right and here's our three years right three years this will be a weekly chart and again you know this is a lot clearer to me right here we have you know this downtrend is over as far as I'm concerned you know nice uptrend here and we're breaking out you know, this is a weekly chart, so we still have to wait to Friday. Uh, but it looks like we're breaking out of this most recent, you know, strong pivot high, and that our next area of resistance here, you know, maybe is around fifty dollars. But you know, this ETF not too long ago, only about two years ago, was an eighty dollar ETF, and so here's a definitely would be an opportunity to do some of those uh, those bullish call scenarios. Right? I would definitely be interested in this one. Um, in terms of options. And the reason why probably on this one is if I went to my constituents on this one is, yeah, I'm only holding 21 different individual markets, but here we can see that this one is not really in stocks. It is in private companies, private holdings, right? And they are uh, Chinese, a lot of them are Chinese companies. You know, there's a couple of Canadian ones in here, but so, you know, I don't know if I'd be really comfortable owning the ETF as a, you know, an individual asset, but, you know, trading options on this one, yeah, I think I could do that. You know, I would definitely do that, right? So that would be a good opportunity. So hopefully that would be, hope that answered your question, my friend out there. Okay, so John, we have a user asking if you could talk about weighted alpha. We're on the top 100 ETFs page. What does that mean and why is that important? Well, it's a measurement of how much the stock has risen or fallen over a uh, one year period. And so what um, bar chart does is he kind of weights this for us and it ranks them in in order of the greater the greater alpha as you can see here now what we can do with this one is you know you know a lot of these top 10 here we can see that the weighted alpha over one year is you know a, a large amount of price movement that might be a sign that you know this uh, ETF is gotten a little frothy but you know what I might do is look for an ETF that hasn't uh, had a big alpha or uh, a big price movement in a shorter period of time. Now, um, one of the ones that I, I've been kind of been watching is, you know, um, uh, our TAN, which is our solar energy one. And um, let's just look at it as a chart, right? 
and you know nice consistent movement and this is what i'm kind of saying here we can see you know we have a big price movement in a very short period of time but what i what i might do is go into my performance tab here and see how this is done you know uh, that year to date versus um you know the last three or six months and um, what I want to try to do is, again, what we talked about is I want to find that that uh, ETF that is just starting to get really active, starting to really. Uh, and so you can see that, you know, for year to date, um, this one is been up 60 percent, but 40 percent of that has has happened in the last six months. So there's a greater probability that this particular um ETF is going to outperform for the next six months. So that weighted alpha will kind of give us, get us to this point of uh, doing our price or in, in this case, price performance. Okay. Okay, great. Well, John, thank you for your presentation today. You've given us a lot of good, interesting things to think about when choosing an ETF to put in our portfolios. Uh, I have a number of people asking whether the things that you presented today are part of the website for you know for for members or if they're free tools. A lot of the things that John went through today, like the ETF screener, it does require a bar chart membership, and we offer a free basic membership which you can sign up for using that sign up button in the upper right corner of the site that you see there. We also offer Bar Chart Premier, which is a uh, paid subscription that gives you a number of additional tools other than uh, the ETF screener. Uh, we talked a little bit about screening for covered calls on ETFs, and those option screeners are a Premier tool. If you haven't tried Premier, we offer a 30-day free trial, so I suggest that you Either sign up for a basic free membership today, start playing around with the ETF screener, or uh, use that 30-day free trial for Bar Chart Premier and see what we can do to help you find interesting ETFs to add to your portfolio. So with that, I'd like to thank everybody for attending today. Uh, be healthy, stay profitable, and keep on coming back to barchart.com for new ideas. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.